Hello, I'm Robbie Fowler and you're watching Redman TV. Hello and welcome to the Red Men TV on an afternoon that saw the Mighty Reds win their first opening day game at Anfield since 2001 with a 1-0 victory over Mark Hughes' Stoke City side. In a word... <laughs> um, yeah, let's uh, let's get stuck in straight away to some of your Facebook comments. Um, Michael Tomlinson says, Best opening game to a season I can remember. Brilliant to watch. Attack was fluid and lively. And Mignolet is a beast. We're going to win the league. Yeah, well, uh, at the time of filming, we are, in fact, top of the Premier League. Um, by the time this comes out, probably not. Um, but no, absolutely fantastic. Um, Best opening game, yeah, I mean, in recent memory, yeah, I mean, we, we, we have a habit of being pretty poor <laughs> when the season starts, or rather, not so much pretty poor, but just really unlucky. I mean, I can think of so many times when it's just not quite worked out for us over the years, you know, think back to um, think back to Arsenal under Hodgson, I mean, that probably worked out for the best, ultimately, but, you know, a game that we come so close to winning on the opening day, going back to Stuart Diamond's debut against Sunderland, where he, he rattles the crossbar, and, you know, you think about all the things that could have slightly been different over the years, and... If we just had that, just that extra little slice of luck at the start of the season, no, I thought it was great. Um, attack was fluid and lively. Yeah, we, you know, okay, we did. We lack the cutting edge that we're really going to need if we're going to press on. But let's not forget, this is Stoke. We are notoriously shit against Stoke City, and albeit you know they've changed the manager, maybe they've not got quite the. 110%, you know, someone said they've changed the system under Mark Hughes, and I suspect they've probably changed from like rugby league to rugby union, if that's the case. Um, <laughs> so it was definitely a physical encounter, but what I like the fact is that we, 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 gave, we gave our all in that match, and we did create chances on another day. If Begovic doesn't have a fucking worldie, we'd probably walk away with, uh, with well, a bag full of goals there. Okay, uh, Barry Jordan on, on, uh, on Twitter says, uh, we have to cut this shit out. <laughs> I fear these I fear these games against the Stokes and West Ham's more than the Chelsea's and the Manuals. Well, I know what you're trying to say, but um, we've just won. <laughs> so maybe maybe we have cut it out. Who knows? Let's look on the bright side. Maybe that's the end. Maybe that's all gone. No, I don't suspect it is. I think we're always going to... Well, what we said last season was we, we struggled against physical sides time and time again. And, and it's... Is it... Is it ideal, you know, to to have a system in place that, that doesn't cope well against physical sides? And that, the answer was no last season. But what we also said was, let's see how we adapt that in the summer. We've not necessarily brought the players in because we thought, well, let's get a few grocks in, let's get some more physical players into the into the first eleven. We've not actually, you know, we've not done that in the midfield. You know, pretty much exactly the same as it was last season. I thought it was an inspired choice to put Henderson instead of Allen. I don't think anyone saw that coming, and it, I think that was vindicated. His passing wasn't great. But as work rate and the way he put himself about him on another day, he'd have two goals. Uh, so I can't really fault his performance. But no, I thought what, what was great about that was the physical aggression that that side showed. And we had a team of midgets by comparison to them. They would, it was like, if anyone remembers it, an old pro land of the Giants. That's what we were like. We were literally little teeny tiny people walking around, like getting trampled on by Hooth and, well, Crouch. Not so much trampled on. Even if he stood on an ant, he'd probably just like, you know, it'd sort of stay. Intact. I, I don't know where I'm going with that. Um, but no, I thought we, I thought we, we got really stuck in. We pressed very high up the pitch. People have criticised Lucas Lever for sitting a little bit too deep, being too much of just a, a DM. He was pressing on the edge of their 18-yard box. Pfft, absolutely astonishing, and that's more what I want to see from a Liverpool side. It, it was we saw it at times last season, but we didn't see enough of it, and that's what I love most about football, particularly when Liverpool play that way, is just putting the opposition under as much pressure as possible and just making them make mistakes. And we did, and we caused them problems. And I mean, it's not to say they didn't cause us problems, because they did. There was a few sticky moments, but no, on the whole, uh, yeah, I, I think that if this is how we need to approach the, the, the Stokes and the West Ham's of this world, if we're going to... And, and hopefully we can replicate that kind of performance. OK, uh, Colin Kaplan says, excellent performance. Throw in Suarez and a bit more match sharpness and be rolling over teams like this. Uh, most, most teams this season uh, still bit my fingers off, though. Yeah, you and me both, mate. That was... It's weird because, you know, we had it so good at times under, under Breezes. You know, we, we really, that team reached the pinnacle in sort of 2009, didn't it? And, um, and we, were, we were outstanding through a lot of his, his reign. We had the down points, of course, which I'm not going to get into. But it was great to sort of care again. You know, it's not that we don't 
Not that we don't care, but I, I was literally the last 10 minutes clinging on, you know what I mean? Just like, you know, you're looking up to the sky and you're praying for some, some sort of helping hand from a higher power to, to drag you over the line there. Because although, you, you know, you should should be, be beating teams like that at Anfield, you know, we've seen it time and time again. That's not the case. That's not how the Premier League works. That's not how football is. There's some teams that you just struggle against. And in these instances, and I said it in the match build-up, just wanted a one nil Just wanted to get through that game, get the three points by hook or by crook. Sometimes the points are more important than the performance or, or the goals you've scored. So yeah, I um, I was nervous, nervous to say the, the very least. There. Um, so yeah, no, I, and I was pleased to say pleased with the all round performance. Apart from we were a little bit shaky at the back and and, and what have you, but on the whole, you can't really fault it. Uh, Carl Rigby oh. says absolutely amazing game. Coutinho is a beast, played great as usual, and it actually squared up to Inzondi, who's about a foot taller than him. Yes, a foot taller than him and the rest. Uh, but again, this is what I'm talking about, this this aggression. You had a Liverpool side fighting for each other, you know. Coutinho's going in there and getting stuck, and then Lucas is barreling in to sort him out, or Coutinho's getting targeted for tackles, and then Gerrard's going over as the enforcer and sorting them out with a tackle, like, you know, straight afterwards. Like, great to see the, 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 the unity in the team, and they do look a lot more together, and they look a lot more focused and a lot more determined. Like, they're not they're determined and not to have the start of the season that we had last season. You no, know, I was very, very happy with that. And again, like I said, I think Coutinho may be lacking a little bit defensively sometimes, but again, for the lad of his, his, his physical stature, great to see him sort of throwing his weight about, you know, what limited weight he has. He's got, if he, he's going to succeed in the Premier League, he's going to come up against teams like Stoke. And the fact that he can sort of get up, dust himself off and get on with his game, I think speaks volumes to his, to his character uh, as much as his, 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 um, you know, his, his, his actual ability on the ball or whatever. Uh, OK, Ricky uh, Mendes says, I was damn near about to cry when the ref called for a penalty. Mignolet, let's change. You hero. Do you like that? <laughs> um, mate, I literally, I nearly, I mean, and this is probably big since I've become a father, I've become an emotional mess. And I very nearly shed a tear when he saved that. Because I was there and they, had the, they got the free kick and I thought, this is it, this is, these are the moments that seasons hang on. And it's ridiculous to say that in the first game of the season. We've got so much football to play. But I've seen Liverpool sides just against teams like Stoke just not have that slice of luck. You have, have things go against your things just don't go quite to plan. And they got that free kick and I thought, oh, fucking hell, here we go. And then the, the resulting penalty that comes from it, Daniel Agger, who I was outstanding, had just a moment of spazzy madness in the in the box like and the penalty and, and great to see uh, Mignolet doing the manual Neuer twatting the crossbar I like to see goalkeepers basically doing everything in the power to look as big as possible and imposing and um, you know and you're thinking oh well you know he'd, he'd had a, a very sticky start to the game let's be honest Mignolet did not have a, a convincing start to his, uh, his Liverpool uh, full debut um, professional competitive debut um, you know looked a little bit shaky aerially and Look nervous, and, and I know that's not in his, his personality. Maybe the game was getting to him a little bit. Pulls out an outstanding save in the first half to keep the game as it, as it was. You know, obviously got lucky when they hit the crossbar in the, in the, in the early on in the game, but that penalty save, absolutely outstanding. Sometimes, as I say, seasons can be make, made or broken on on little little points in the match and for me I, I'm hoping that was one of them that really should give him masses of confidence it'll give Liverpool fans masses of confidence in him maybe his distribution his distribution's not going to match up to Pepe Reina's but his shot saving ability I think already we've seen it was head and shoulders above what Pepe was offering for the last few seasons as a Liverpool keeper so um, great to see Mignolet make himself the hero and, and on, on a normal day I'd probably give him man of the match but my man of the match I'm going to give to you this week one Colo Torre you know why? Because he's a fucking beast. It's just amazing. I mean, you look, I've had Arsenal fans, and there'll be a few watching this, because you do, um, saying, like, oh, he was past it when he left us. Looks quality to me. Maybe because maybe he was at an even higher level for using watching his deterioration. You maybe had that frame of comparison. But we've had Jamie Carragher, he was a boss, he was a legend, Liverpool legend, amazing. But defended so deep with him. Colo Torre was just, he was stepping up and he was winning things and he was stepping out with the ball. And you know what? He's not like a culture, genuine culture centre half, but we were dangerous from set pieces because of Colo Torre. We were dangerous, we, you know, we looked solid at the back. You know, we did well. Okay, we went lethally 110% on the back, but I just felt a lot more assured having someone like him there. So I'm, and, and it was also a chance, I don't know who had the header, 
But uh, bear in mind, I've just come straight from Anfield to do this. Like, but someone had the head. Oh no, I think it might have been Ashbush missed it, put his head wide, and like Torre was like, oh, like, like he missed this chance. In, like in the last minute, the FA Cup final, he was feeling it on the pitch, and he was like, oh, and there's one where he bombed forward in support, and it didn't quite broke down, and, and he went fucking pelting back up the pitch. It's like, oh, I just love to see players with that, like. Just that level of enthusiasm and clearly just reading of the game and just, ah, oh, just, yeah, Colo Torre, you know, is just, he's my man of the match. And feel free to disagree, there, there are plenty of options there that, you know, Daniel Stone has put a good shift in, Coutinho played well. Um, I thought Lucas had a very good game as well. Daniel Aga, apart from the aforementioned moments of Spazzy Mefnis in the box, was outstanding. Um, Glenn Johnson, very good. I mean, everyone, the Aspas looked, looked a little star, just quick turns and trying to link up and what have you. Um, Jordan Henderson put, put a shift in. Let me know your uh, man of the match in the comments section underneath, of course. Um, uh, before we go, I want to draw your attention to Redmen TV 4.0. It is here. Finally, we've banging on about it for ages. It means loads of new shows coming to the YouTube channel and we've revamped our website as well. So go and check that out on the redmentv.com. We've now got three exclusive subscriber shows per week on a Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. That's uh, the final word. We're gonna, we spend 45 minutes to an hour, wrap it up. Uh, the, the last game show in this instance, obviously on Stoke, we'll be, we'll be going over this game with a fine tooth comb. On Wednesday, it's the Reds Roundup where we look at all the Liverpool news doing the, uh, doing the rounds on the, the Tinter web. I can't believe I've just said tinsel web, garlic breads while we're at it, like, um, And then on Fridays, we've got the Friday football show, which is taking the Liverpool blinkers off and looking at the wider footballing world, world pre predominantly the Premier League, but also, you know, some of the bigger things happening in world football as well. So do check them out. It's free for a month. To, uh, you get a free month's trial and access to our full back catalogue as well. So check them out. There's loads of extras uh, based on the, the YouTube stuff. On the YouTube stuff, we've got the funny old game on Monday. We're going to have extreme football challenges coming your way. The LFC strip. For the home, the home kit 2013-2014, which is sure to interest teenage boys and make us look like we've sold out and we've lowered, gone to the lowest common denominator to anyone who enjoys slightly more highbrow content. But anyway, check it all out on, here, on the YouTube channel or, of course, on the redmentv.com. We've also got loads of articles, about, loads of stuff. Go, just fucking check it out. What else are you going to do? Before match the day, go and, go and check all that stuff out. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, it's been amazing. What a day. Liverpool finally kicking off the season the way we want to see it. So uh, don't forget to leave any of your thoughts in the comment section don't forget to give the video a thumbs up click the free YouTube subscribe button in the corner yada 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 anyway thank you very much and hope to see you on the subscriber show on Wednesday thank you very much and good night Sarah.